Page 13, Pedal Study. In this page, they're introducing you to the pedal. One of the pedals. Let's talk pedals for just a bit. Life just got interesting here. Pianos over the years have had anywhere from one to five pedals, I think. I don't know. Generally anymore on acoustic pianos, you'll see two or three pedals on them. If you have an electronic keyboard, electronic piano, chances are you only have one pedal. If you have a pedal at all, it would be one pedal. And that is the pedal we're going to study here. So if you're good to go, if you've got an electronic keyboard, you're fine, assuming you have a pedal. Not all electronic keyboards have a port, I guess, for a pedal, but if yours does have a port for a pedal and you don't have a pedal, then I encourage you to buy a pedal, they don't cost that much, and use it. Plug it in and use it. Otherwise, you can't really practice the pedal study. Now, if you have two or three pedals on your piano, the one we're talking about is the right pedal, the one on the right. The one near your right, the one near the upper part of the keyboard, the one up closest to that. Called several names, damper pedal, sustaining pedal, loud pedal, I don't know, I call it a few other names we won't mention in polite company, but okay. I don't like calling it the loud pedal because that's a little bit misleading, but I, damper pedal or sustaining pedal. The reason is because the dampers are those things that on are against the strings to keep the strings from vibrate, vibrating. So when you pr press a key, the damper for that string comes off the string so the key can vibrate, but when you release the key, the damper goes back on the string so it stops. Those are dampers, so it's called a damper pedal because it works those. It raises them all up and it lowers them all down. Well, that causes all kinds of interesting things to happen. It's called a sustaining pedal because it sustains the note. You can press the key down in the pedal and then you can lift the key up and it'll, the note sustains or it keeps ringing out. So it's called a sustaining pedal too. Called a legato pedal sometimes because that's actually more of a technique of pedaling than the name of the pedal itself. Well, so much for my rant on pedals. There's a number of different musical notations for the pedal. You'll run across them from time to time. The one they're showing in this book is the most common. And the one they're showing you first is the line goes down. This is below the bottom staff. The line goes down, and it goes across, then it comes up. In theory, when the line goes down, you push the pedal down, and you hold it down all the time the line is across, and then when the line goes up, you lift the pedal up. So first, let's get the notes and the rhythms of this, because when I use a pedal in a piece, I always add the pedal last, because as I say, when I learn a piece, I have a particular order I like to do things in, like we've been using the order. You get the notes and the rhythms and the fingering first, and then we go back and add the articulation, the staccatos and accents and that stuff. And then I go back and add the dynamics, so I'm gradually building it up. Well, after all of that, then I add the pedal. So I always learn a piece without pedal first, because I want to hear clearly what the fingers are doing, because the pedal tends to cover things up. Uh-uh. I'm not going to change my finger technique because I'm using the pedal. Uh-uh. So, First, let's do this. We can just broken chords. I'm going to take both hands at one time here because it kind of it's just a broken chord. So we have a half note here, and then a C chord, and then the treble clef. The left hand comes over to play the C. Here, so it's one and two and three. Now you can't hold the half note down because you got to come over here. Okay, in theory you would. So hold it down as long as you can, and then come back down here. And you just come through. It's an F. So go through and play this. Make sure you can play it okay. Second line, last measure. Remember that two ledger lines above the treble clef is a high, high C. Just know that note. Now in the third line, then we get an F sharp. there, so go through 
intro and get this notes and the rhythm and all that. The last measure, it's an F and a G together. Sounds wonderful, don't it? What? Well, that's what it is. It's not my fault. They wrote it. They did it. Once you can do that, then you add the articulation. They have accents on some of these left hand notes. Play it a little louder, just a little louder. We want it to ring out. It's like a bell. Now, there's no accent on the last one. In fact, the accents went away after the first three measures. I don't know if that's an error or not. I see no reason to accent the first three measures and then stop. So in my opinion, maybe we need to continue accenting this, the last half note in every measure to keep that going. I don't see any reason not to, so I would just keep accenting them. You'd have to ask them why they didn't accent all, all the half notes like that. And then the dynamics, well that's both hands except the accents will be a little louder. Whatever you think moderately soft is, that's going to be moderately loud, the accent. I'd keep putting in the accents. They put in a swell there in the second line, last measure. Go up to moderately loud. That makes that note loud. And then go back down. So start it moderately loud, down to moderately soft. Now there maybe you want to leave the accent off because you're decrescendo down. And the third line you're moderately loud. And if you do put accents on those notes, that makes them loud. So forth, you can try that. There's a poco rid at the end. That's so you can enjoy that a lot longer because they also put a fermata over it, which means you just hang on to that and make everybody endure that noise a little longer. Okay. Then once I have all that, then I add the pedal. Because I want to make sure my fingers are doing the right things first. And what I'm going to do is there's different pedaling techniques and I teach the techniques as we go through the pieces. Whatever I think is needed for that piece, that's the technique I teach. We're going to start with the most common and that's the lag pedaling. And that means the pedal lags behind the hands. They don't happen at the same time. So I'm going to push the note down first and then the pedal. And then I lift the pedal up with the hands end of each measure so there's a little silence before I go on. And we do the whole piece that way. You get the idea and it takes a little practice now because now you got to coordinate the foot as well as two hands. Well learn it well with the hands first so that when you add the foot to it you got the hands more or less automatic. So they're doing their thing anyway. And that's what we're doing here. Now we'll change that a little bit later. Right now that's what we're doing. Speed-wise, well, moderato is in the middle somewhere. It, it's up to you what you think moderato is. It has to be accurate, so it's it's whatever. I think that's about a moderato. To me, maybe that's fast to you. Maybe you want to slow it down. But that's fine if, if that's your moderato. Right. Uh, everybody's a little different.
there's a DC alphine at the bottom. Remember, DC means go back to the beginning. Alphine means go to Fina. And the Fina is at the end of the second line. Again, I disagree with their music the way they've written it because they have a double bar line there at the Fina, and in my opinion, that should be a thin and thick bar line because that's the end of a piece symbol, and that's where the piece ends. May not end there the first time you go through it, but it ends there eventually. So it doesn't really affect how we play it. You just go through, you play all four lines, and then go back and play the first two lines again. That's all. And I tend to put in a retard at the fine. So when I, when I'm done and I'm finishing it up, I just want to slow down a little bit. It's the end of a piece. That's part of interpretation. The music doesn't say to, and you don't want to do that all the time. But in this piece, it just made it feel right. To slow down a little bit. Now I'd like to play it with you very slowly. I'm not going to do the dynamics. I will do the pedaling and we'll do the DC Alfini and the whole bit. So I'll give us four counts. Let's just go it slowly together. One and two and ready and go and one and two and three. Four. 